Hi, I'm Amanda. I'm going to talk through an example of using the ArcGIS platform to address challenges faced in a community. This is the Food Bank's home delivery workflow created with ArcGIS in response to COVID-19. Millions of people face hunger every day. Food insecure citizens often don't know when they'll get their next meal. Hunger exists in every community. Food banks are vital resources to feed those most in need of food. Since March of 2020, when stay-at-home orders were put in place, community food banks have had to alter their normal operations in order to respond to the needs of the community. Home delivery of food boxes is just one method to get food to the most vulnerable population that is food insecure. Now, there are multiple challenges faced in order to meet the needs of the community. Specific requirements of who qualifies for the home food delivery, such as the 65 and over population or those with compromised immune systems. The admin staff at the food bank are under a great amount of pressure. They do not have the capacity to micromanage this home delivery program. They're no longer able to accept volunteers on site due to social distancing guidelines, but they're determined to respond to the needs of the community. At this point, they only have information in spreadsheets, and they have no way to visualize or no maps of these delivery locations. Although volunteers are no longer able to assist in the warehouse, they are eager to help however they can, and they're able to help deliver food. Addressing the needs of the community with ArcGIS, we can help the qualifying community get food. We can help the volunteers self-manage their deliveries and take the weight off the shoulders of the admin staff. And we can help the staff respond to the community and see the full delivery operation. This is the full operations view that visualizes the delivery locations on a map. I can see the unassigned food requests here in yellow and those assigned to delivery drivers, the volunteers, in blue. Here I have a list of all the delivery requests that have not yet been fulfilled, and those that have been assigned to volunteers on the list on the right. There's a total of 11 requests in at this point, and three have been assigned to volunteers. We also have household size, which is important information for the admin staff to understand operations. But how did we even get here? Well, it all starts with Survey123. We have a form to gather this, these requests from the community. If they don't qualify for this program, a series of questions will guide them to where they can get help in their community, where they can go pick up food boxes. However, if they do qualify, the SMART form responds and asks them a few more questions, including contact information, location information, and a few additional details. Now, the admin staff also need to be able to add requests. They could get a phone call and they need to add just one at a time in the same way the community does. They may also have a list and need to add them all at once. With the CSV file and matching fields, we can geocode this list in bulk and add it to the map. Let's look at how this is done. I add the CSV file. It's going to append to the existing survey layer here. First, I check location information. It's looking for location information in my data. It can see I have an address, city, and zip code field. I'm going to connect my unit field here too. Next is field information. These are the fields in the survey, and these are the fields in the CSV file. I don't have matching fields for these first few vetting questions. The list I have has been vetted, and we just have the information we need to deliver to these people. I also have household size. I'm going to connect that here. And some additional comments. Next, we've filled in all the information that's needed, and we can try to add this to the map. It looks like all seven locations were found. That's great. So we push Submit. And now we've just appended those to the survey data. To remove these larger circles, I click here to clear. Now we can see we've added multiple requests at once. 
the volunteer now needs to assign themselves these deliveries. Entering the volunteer app and some instructions on how to navigate the website. As you may recall, we have unassigned in yellow and those assigned to drivers in blue. So let's see how a driver can assign themselves one of these deliveries. I'm going to click on one of these yellow icons that haven't been assigned. Here, more information about the, where this request is going to pops up. I can add my name here. Select the date, time, and any additional comments. As soon as I close this, you'll see it turns blue. So it shows that it's been assigned to me. Let's see how the dashboard is updated. Here we can see now there are 18 total requests in the dashboard, four which have been assigned to delivery drivers. Here is the one that I've just assigned myself. Everything in the map has been updated, including the household size, the list of requests, and I additionally have added a heat map. This is also using the same data layer, just visualizing it a little bit differently. This is important to communicate to stakeholders to understand where the greatest food need is in our community. We were able to address the challenges of the food bank using ArcGIS. We created a community survey in order to gather those qualifying requests from the community. We have an administrative uploader to add single or multiple requests at one time. The volunteers were able to self-assign themselves these deliveries and get food to those who need it most in the community. And the administrators in the office were able to have a full operational view to understand this delivery program in real time. Addressing those challenges involved just one system, one data layer, and four synchronized applications. And that is the food bank's home delivery workflow created with ArcGIS in response to COVID-19. Thank you.